I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, April the 5th, brought to you in part by Beaver County Stockyards, Beaver, Oklahoma. That's on the eastern end of no man's land, otherwise uh, known as the Oklahoma Panhandle there. But uh, talk to my friend Jeff Slatton, managing uh, operations there at Beaver County Stockyards, said they're going to have about 2,700 head here for the regular feeder cattle at auction on Tuesday. Uh, should have a good run of way up cows and then a uh, uh, few odd uh, replacement cows that they always have during the sale. But uh, he told me it is super, super dry. They have not been able to take advantage of any of the moisture that uh, the meat of Oklahoma has had. was in Oklahoma City over the weekend. Uh, they had some rain over the weekend. They had some more on Monday. Uh, and the storms just keep uh, coming up and falling over there on central and eastern Oklahoma but on the western end especially there in the Oklahoma panhandle just come still kind of very very dry there but uh, praying for rain in that part of the country but uh, if, you, if you're looking for a market uh, to sell your cattle Beaver County Stockyards is an awful good one to go to. Empty Victory and you think well what's that? Well your Northern Plains feedlots, they scrambled last week and they worked until late in the week and ended up getting a higher market. Not just firm, but higher. And, uh, and a lot of them really, really dug in and scraped and clawed trying to get some of this market position back uh, before we start seeing bigger numbers of market rate of cattle here coming up within a month or so. But uh, the Southern Plains, I guess uh, they're beat down so hard. All they want for their cattle is 138, so that's what they take every week. They've already sold several of them this week at 138. And yes, it's Tuesday morning. But uh, uh, empty victory there. And, and why would they jump so quick on a Monday morning to sell cattle at 138? Northern Plains uh, sold some cattle at 140. And 222 dressed, which is uh, is up there, you know, near strong steady. Of course, Southern Plains is steady too, but selling at a couple dollar discount there. Well, it's because the board opened up so hard uh, lower on Monday, and with your board down, all, you know that that kind of breeds uh, uncertainty and and uh, discontent and, and pessimism. But it also uh, brings about a basis opportunity. So all your big cattle feeders are hedged. Uh, when your market opens up uh, sharply lower like that, well, that allows them to get out of that hedge uh, and save some money there. And when they're selling cattle steady, which a lot of them figured maybe that was all they're going to get anyway, well, they've already uh, assured themselves that steady is all we'll ever get this week. Now, selling cattle on a Monday uh, at steady money at 138. But the board, like I said, opened up sharply lower and ended up coming back quite a bit on your live cattle pits. But at one point, it was as low as 136.95. Ended up uh, closing for the day, uh, regular trading at 138. So, you know, that was another buck that they could get there. But, uh, you know, those feedlot managers, they had... Uh, they had their, their, their packer buyer on one phone and they had their broker on the other phone. I mean, trying to get that opportunity as, as quick as they could. But uh, <clears throat> the, the, uh, the hard down market, and you think, well, why did that happen? Well, of course, your grains were sharply higher. Now, the grains being sharply higher, what did that have to do with market-ready fat cattle? I still struggle to understand what corn has to do with a fat steer that's walking on the truck to go to the slaughter plant. He's done with his corn. He doesn't need any more corn. He's had all the corn he can stand. Why does, uh, why does higher corn have something to do with that market ready fat animal? It doesn't. It has to do with your feeder cattle and they were down so sharply hard uh, and they pulled the, the fat cattle market down with them. Uh, it never did go down as low as what your uh, feeder cattle ended up uh, closing, but uh, down hard. But why did the grains uh, jump through their ass on, on a Monday morning early whenever we'd seen them uh, kind of already realize uh, the spark that they had, uh, you know, from, from all this uh, new energized war or the, the atrocities of the war? I think it had to do with those uh, Butcher uh, Ukraine pictures 
that showed uh, all those dead bodies, which we didn't see that until late, late in the weekend. Now, like I said, this propaganda war, I mean, we, all we know is what we see. I mean, it, it looks like they could have been uh, throwing those dead bodies out, you know, like you was caking cows or something. They was on each side of the pathway from the pictures that I saw. But, uh, you know, that's horrible. Uh, and, and indeed, did uh, was Russia foolish enough just to shoot civilians on the street and leave them lay uh, and then give that territory back to Ukraine so that they could use that, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, sympathies of, of the other countries for them? I, I don't know. That seems foolish to me. But uh, nonetheless, it, it looked rough. And I think those pictures had as much to do with the grains going up so sharply, uh, feeder cattle going down so sharply, sucking the live cattle with them, offering up a basis uh, for your for your uh, cattle feeders, and and then we're already locked in at, at just steady, barely uh, for this week. When this is one of the maybe three, four, five weeks that we have to try to scrape any kind of a, a, a market position back before we run into those uh, heavier numbers of fats. That's, uh, and of course the packers are just licking their chops for that. They cannot wait. They've been scheduling cooler cleanings uh, every week on a Friday, uh, which is, is uh, wiping out our harvest uh, for the week and, uh, and really making it hard to, to get any leverage at all. That's why we got to have this Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act. So <clears throat> it will mandate a minimum percentage of, of each week's buy that each large facility will have to uh, participate in. And they'll set that within regions, uh, wherever that packing plant, whatever region they're in, whatever that percentage level is, then they'll have to participate. Wouldn't that be nice if, if we knew that uh, each of those facilities was gonna have to participate in a minimum percentage of their week's buy uh, in a negotiated manner, either through pure negotiated cash trade, through uh, a negotiated grid, or some kind of an auction, whether it be uh, uh, you know online or a brick and mortar sale. But uh, you know, I don't. We, I still struggle to see how any association, group, uh, bridge club. A uh, horseshoe pitching uh, team or anybody could say that they're pro cattle producer and they're not supporting this bill. This is the only thing we have, guys. It's the only thing we've ever gotten, and the only chance we'll have to get something like this to try to preserve negotiation in our fed cattle arena, which will help preserve uh, negotiation and uh, individual investment and feeding and backgrounding in our lighter weight cattle. But uh, we still we still have uh, people uh, throwing rocks at us from again, uh, across the street and you say, who is us? U.S. Cattlemen's Association is us. Nebraska Cattlemen's Association is us. Iowa Cattlemen's Association, Missouri Cattlemen's Association, several big cattlemen's uh, associations across the Southeast uh, that aren't completely dominated by Farm Bureau Federation. <clears throat> but uh, we did see RCAF finally uh, poke their head up and, and what's the big uh, announcement from them? They think we should table it. They think we should just table that bill. Uh, you know, the two and a half years that we've been fighting tooth and nail uh, to get something done here, working with staffers, working with lawmakers, uh, working on the language of this deal, uh, drumming up support for it and everything, they think we should just table it and, and sit around and piss and moan. Uh, for another year or two and, and uh, kind of draw up some more membership. No, not what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to get this bill done. Uh, pretty sure we, we've uh, got the Senate sewed up. Not sure what kind of tricks uh, North American Meat Institute and uh, National Corporate Beef Association are doing behind the scenes, but uh, I tell you what, this is a bipartisan bill and your lawmakers are wanting to do something bipartisan. And this is absolute bipartisan bill. It's got, uh, it's got authors uh, and, and guys signed on and ladies on both sides of the aisle. Uh, we've got, and it's pretty well balanced out. 
The White House administration has endorsed it. They want to get this deal done. Uh, the Democrats up there uh, want to uh, act like that they're, they're uh, signing on with them and doing what they want. It's going to take a lot of fighting to kill this deal, but we've got to fight for it, people. And uh, I, I've told you many times, this will at least ensure and put a, a, a baseline bottom on our negotiated trade and then begin to start to try to adjust it higher. But if we don't do something, I mean, like I've said many times, we're going to be net zero in Texas. Uh, Colorado will either beat them or they'll be immediately following, then Kansas, then Nebraska, then Iowa. So, you know, we've got to do something. How can you do something? Write this down. You can go back and, and re-listen to this. But 202-225-3121. That's your switchboard for the house, which we need the most help in the house. And tell them that you're uh, wanting to support Cattle Price Discovery and Transparency Act, Senate Bill 3229. Let's talk about your board on Monday to open the week. April live cattle futures down 65 cents at 138 even. And that is our universal market for fat cattle in the Southern Plains is 138. We trade there every week and sometimes we trade there on Monday morning like we did this week. June down 92 cents at 134.92. Going your back months, your live cattle pits down 77 to up 17. That up 17 was just on next April. Uh, your April feeder cattle futures, get this down $3.20, which, you know, that's tough. And, and we're losing a lot of ground on our feeder cattle. Where does that hurt the most? It hurts the most on people that are trying to get LRPs done uh, because they're fading. And if you guys haven't got that done, it's not because I didn't tell you to do it. But uh, that we're just losing ground there. But our, our current index is, is under 156 so with that uh, April Peter cattle board, which it's now the spot uh, contract down that hard, still sitting at 158.37. It's still a pretty good premium to what cattle are actually bringing. But we thought we might gain a little uh, ground through April here. But uh, May uh, was down 365. Ouch! But it, it was so inflated, it's still at 162.47. Back months, feeder cattle all down hard, buck and a half to two and a quarter lower. Uh, your corn, like I said, all your grains are up big, up 15 and a half cent at 750 and a half cent per bushel. I was talking to a, a cattle feeder friend of mine on uh, Monday. He said uh, his cost of gains in his feed yard in the, in the lower half of the, of the southern plains down here, uh, quite a ways south of Amarillo. Uh, are sitting at a buck and a half a pound right now. So how these guys are given uh, a buck and a half for, for nine weights and feeding them for a buck and a half and then selling them for 138, which it won't be 138 when they sell those cattle. It'll be more like 128 or 130. I'm not sure how they're making that work. Uh, just, you know, just uh, off the cuff, in my mind, it doesn't sound like it'll work. Beans up 19 and a half cents at 16.02 and a quarter. Kansas City hard red winter wheat up 24 and three quarters cent at 10.37 and three quarters. <clears throat> Your fats and and I always give the weighted average on last week's market uh, on a Tuesday morning, but hell, we we've, we've already traded uh, a pretty the, probably a significant number of fats in in Kansas. I got to give you the the current market, which is this week, and all because of the basis jumping. Uh, Iowa. Uh, sold about a thousand head at 222. Nebraska about 1900 head on Monday morning at 140 and 222. Kansas about 5100 at 138 and Texas about a thousand at 138. Texas does not trade cattle on Monday mornings but they did this week at 138 steady money and uh, <clears throat> like I said uh, there will there'll be more trade than that that happened after the two o'clock deadline when they have to turn that in. So we're probably going to be a third of the way done uh, with our negotiated trade in the five area feeding region uh, by the time we get to Tuesday morning. How about your weighted average on last week's trade where we did have an empty victory 
<clears throat> just short of 85,000 head negotiated sales in your five area feeding region compared to 77,100 last week, 67,100, same week a year ago. And like I said, uh, your live sales steers and heifers, one and a half to two dollars higher. All those gains seen in the northern plains, but still it was higher. I had a range in prices from 137 to 14350, but your weighted average on live steers in your five area feeding region, 139.32, up 37 cents. So you know, on a weighted average, up 37 cents is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, dress sales 221 to 228, one to three dollars higher. Of course, that's all in the northern plains, so you saw the big gains there. Uh, weighted average on dress steers 222.61, up a dollar 15. That's significant. Nationwide negotiated sales 97,800 compared to 91,200 last week. 77,200 the same week a year ago. Uh, of your 97,800, about 29% of them, which is more than we like, about 28,200 sold for the 15 to 30 day delivery. And it's just your packers trying to set you guys up. You know, they're, they're gonna get some cattle bought here out front two to four weeks. And then when those bigger numbers start showing up on the show list, bam, that's where they get you for about three or four bucks in one week there because they won't need many cattle. Guys will be wanting to get rid of them. Uh, they're, they're selling them at steady money now out front and that's how they get you whenever they got cattle coming. Negotiated grid sales uh, accounted for 34,300 and the formula sales 248,100 head. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real time index on DV auction late in the day on Monday set at 155.72 that was down 42 cents RTI brought to you by Margin Tracks by Midcon talk about your big sales on Monday your big high volume sales Oklahoma National Stockyards in Oklahoma City 8,000 head and about as tough as it was good last week feeders were steady to three dollars lower calves six to ten dollars lower uh, I wanted to, to make a point that both the reporters in Oklahoma City and in Joplin noted that the quality was plainer than usual. We about run out of good cattle, guys. Uh, we're, we're selling the junk and the cleanup deals now, and that's one reason that your market's so much lower. People still want the cattle, but they're not gonna give uh, those big prices for, for plainer cattle. And, uh, and now we're starting to see the Southeast on their better bunches of cattle outsell the, the central part of the United States and those cattle are, are got a lot of quality to them. They may not have the hair of the cattle in the plains, but that's the last thing you want on fat cattle in June and July and August is hair because they're going to get hot. So uh, they'll buy those cattle in the southeast. Good way to, to add value to them. Keep them home guys in the southeast. Make yearlings out of them. I'll tell you about some in a minute. But uh, Joplin Regional Stock had 6,400 head there for their sale. Market was steady to $3 lower. Uh, now, stick out deal in Joplin on some stockers. And from what I saw in Oklahoma City and Joplin, your stockers were immune to the lower market. If somebody's got some true stocker cattle, some kind of old uh, crop calves, calf weight yearling kind of deals, uh, that had some condition, thin condition to, to really turn out on grass, they still sold just as good. In Joplin, they had 52 head, 648 pound steers that bring 180 bucks. How about uh, a market like I was talking about in the Southeast? Unionville, Tennessee, my friend Jacob Massey, who's a, a world-class auctioneer and backgrounder of lightweight calves, he buys little bitty two, three weight calves and, uh, and spends a lot of time with them, takes care of them, gives them the TLC that they need and gets them going and backgrounds them, sells them as yearlings, they're local. That's what you guys need to do. Don't puke those calves uh, at, those, at those light weights right off the cow. Add value to those cattle, give them their backgrounding, make them foolproof and then you can sell them. But uh, Jacob sold 63 head of feeder heifers Weighed 781 at Unionville, Tennessee at 142.50. 
pretty good price there on some heifers. They were all, they were black and black baldy, but put together as real lightweights there. How about bluegrass stockyards? Uh, the main location there in Lexington, Kentucky, 66 head, 788 pound steers bring 159. That's as much as they bring anywhere, people, and that's in uh, that's in Lexington, Kentucky, standing in the ring. But the best quote that I saw anywhere on Monday, your round grow top quote for the day, and indeed come out of National Livestock Commission firm in Oklahoma City. Who says Oklahoma City don't have top quotes? Listen to this one on some thin stalker type cattle. They might sound heavy to you uh, to be called stalkers, but uh, they're they're too damn high to put right on feed. You got it. You got to cheapen them up some way. But 76 head, 716 pound steers in a thin condition bring 175 and a quarter in Oklahoma City. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.